Jerome Powell just spoke, and the markets are moving a lot <laughs> during a speech and right after. This is the time that we all sit around our computers or around our TVs and watch one person talk about whether they're going to raise by 25 basis points or zero, when they'll consider hiking, and just small changes in speech patterns. One word difference can change the market's outlook completely. It does make sense because there are huge implications to these different rate hikes and rate cuts, but we're going to take a look at it here today. If you don't mind, hit the subscribe button underneath the video. That way you can see future videos just like this. You don't have to watch a long, boring, drawn-out speech. You can just watch videos like this. There's also a link down there to the Patreon in case you want to know exactly when I'm buying and selling different companies and stocks uh, and cryptos. Definitely check that link out underneath the video. Now, crypto is moving down. <laughs> Bitcoin uh, almost hit 29,000 right after we got the rate uh, decision. I believe it was right after, but before the speech. Now, Bitcoin's well under 28,000. We'll talk about why that is. The NASDAQ is just slightly down. Now, uh, like I said, Bitcoin falling down, now jumping up a little bit from the bottoms. Keep in mind, this is the same level that we were just two days ago. So this is not crazy. I've been saying for a while we could see a pullback because we made such a big move up, up to tw nearly 29,000. It's normal to see a bit of a pullback being up 45% in 10 or 11 days is not sustainable. Uh, continuously moving up that much, we can't see that. We, we need to see some pullbacks here and there. Now, we did get a 25 basis point hike. So that's the, the big message is that they are still raising. Now the next market or the next meeting is May 3. Now this is the next rate decision and there's a 50-50 chance that we'll get 25 basis points versus zero hike. Now that's what the market's pricing in. However, Jerome Powell still thinks or the Fed still thinks that we're going to need probably 25 basis points more and we'll show that here in a second and we'll go through his speech. But first of all, just a couple important things from the press release. It no longer says ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate, but instead the committee will closely monitor incoming information. Now the press release itself looked a little bit dovish. Now you can see that the federal funds rate median 2023 projection is 5.1%. This is the same as what it, they said back in December. So we have had a couple, um, I, I don't want to say bad CPI prints, but we did get not great CPI, and we also had it revised up, PPI and CPI, uh, a little bit towards the uh, end of last year and then the first month or two of this year. So this was, I think, a little bit dovish, saying that they still expect 5.1%, basically just 25 basis points higher than we are right now. 2024, they expected to go up to 4.3% instead of 4.1%. So basically what they're saying is, we don't expect to have to raise much higher, but we'll probably keep these rates high for longer. So next year, they're still expecting us to go down about 0.8%, but they're not expecting to do uh, any cuts this year, really. Now, moving on to uh, the actual speech. So Jerome Powell opened by talking about the banks. Obviously, everyone's thinking about the banks right now. He said, all depositors, savings, are safe or all their deposits are safe basically he said that over and over that people should have confidence in their banks he said that they're they have a strong capital and liquidity position and that the fed itself is willing to use all the tools at their disposal to backstop the banks essentially but then he went over to talking about inflation inflation is still too high he says and labor is still tight so they do think that they can continue to raise rates at this point Someone asked, how serious were you thinking about a pause? Now, I personally thought that they probably weren't too serious about it. They were going to raise 25 basis points. I've been saying that for a week or two that I thought that they were going to raise 25 basis points. But he said they did consider it. He said they think that what happened with the banks will tighten lending conditions. And this is similar to having rate hikes. So it basically works in their favor. It works in the Fed's favor because they won't have to raise rates as high because they think that banks will be less likely to lend. And then he got tons of questions on banks. He started to get a little bit frustrated, I think, even at some of the questions on banks. But uh, he kept on answering them. He said that uh, 
participants don't see a rate cut this year, which kind of hit headlines, a lot of people talking about that. QE recently, like the run-up last week, uh, and be careful about that. You know, we say QE, but it's basically the Fed putting more liquidity into the system, adding assets to their balance sheet. They said it's temporary. It basically is just to provide more liquidity to the banks. However, that's what they say a lot of the time. Maybe we'll see that actually stay. Uh, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Maybe we'll see that stay around for a while, but we'll have to see. Someone asked, do you still see a possibility of a soft landing? And he said, it's too soon to say if the last few weeks will weigh on the possibility of a soft landing, but he does think that it's possible. So kind of steering into the direction of no, it's probably not likely, but it's still possible. And that's where I get the title to this video. Basically, it sounds like he's basically saying that this is worse. It's getting worse out there. Uh, whether it is the fact that inflation is not coming down as quickly as we think, or the fact that they do expect GDP to be at 0.8% to 0.8% over the next year, basically showing we don't think that we're going to have much growth over the next year and possibly maybe even hit a recession. I think that's maybe one of the bigger changes that we can get out of this is that they've seemed less less likely or it seems like they think it's less likely that we're going to get out of this scot-free, that we're going to get through this without a recession. And then the last thing, uh, what situation would warrant a rate cut? And he said, financial conditions have tightened probably more than traditional indices say because they don't really talk about bank liquidity and lending. But he said rate cuts are not in their base case. So overall, I think this is pretty much what he's been saying for the last couple of rate decisions or uh, the last couple of meetings. However, it's not what the market expects. The market expected that they were not going to raise much more. They weren't going to raise after this meeting. They are expecting a rate cut by the end of the year, and he's basically saying that's not going to happen. Now, the market, like I said, is pricing this in. Now it's up a little bit. The NASDAQ's up a little bit uh, after the end of the speech. Typically, we see tons of volatility. It's hard to see exactly what the market's going to do because it makes these wild swings up and down a couple percent. Crypto is moving on this as well. You can see Bitcoin did go below this trend line, but again, it's to the level that it was just a few days ago. Now, why are they being so cautious about making sure uh, that they're raising rates and, and just cautious about inflation in general? Well, UK got inflation numbers and it jumped 1.1% month over month. So they had this large spike after a really good month last year, the, lo the lowest that they've seen in years where they actually saw a negative 0.6, they had a 1.1% print, which was much higher than they were expecting. UK CPI is now 10.4 in February versus 10.1 in January. And it was expected that they were only going to have 9.9%, which is still huge. But the, the US government does not want the same thing to happen. And this is what the government's saying, 10.4%. Trueflation, which looks at a variety of goods and services online, says 17%. So who knows? It seems like inflation is still running really high in the U.S. and in Europe. But in the U.S., we're looking at 4.4% according to Trueflation. So a much lower number than what we're seeing in the U.K. But there's still a lot of stress because there are banks that are collapsing. I think this will put more pressure on the banks. And we have some other big crypto news too we'll talk about here in a second. But I do think this will put more pressure on the banks. Jerome Powell seems to think that they're going to be fine, that this increased liquidity is really going to help, and then that everyone should feel safe at their banks, which I don't think everyone does. But I think 25 basis points on top of what they've already done isn't going to be that substantial. It will put more stress on the banks, but if banks haven't already delevered already from the last couple of weeks, I think that this that they were going to break down anyways, right? Uh, I don't think 25 basis points is really the problem right now. It's because it's that the banks were too levered and just didn't get uh, a better position ahead of this rate hike. Now, the Treasury uh, is supposed to be saying that they will basically do everything to ensure savings remain safe. Yellen's going to talk to senators. I don't know what Yellen can say 
unless, I mean, she had a speech a few days ago, but I'm hoping that they actually raise FDIC deposit uh, insurance numbers. So instead of 250,000, I think it would be beneficial to raise this up a little bit because it has been a while. But I think the markets would also rally if they said that they're going to backstop all deposits. I'm not sure they can actually do that or that they will because then it basically gives the banks the ability to get a little bit riskier. And I, I don't think that the Treasury or the Fed really has the money to go and backstop all deposits if banks start going down left and right. I think that would be very bad. Uh, but, you know, maybe they'll come out and say that here soon. Now, tomorrow is when we will see what the Fed did this last week to increase their balance sheet or decrease it. But I was wrong over the last few days. I kept on thinking that this was coming out on Wednesdays, but it comes out on Thursdays. But it, it's the Wednesday uh, level. Basically, they're taking a look every Wednesday at the Fed balance sheet. That will be coming out tomorrow. Could have a bit of a rally. If we see another big increase, we could be near the top of the federal balance sheet where it was back in April of 2022, which typically makes the markets pump. Now, the Fed is still in a tight spot, though, raising rates like this because they have so much money that's going to be coming uh, to maturity over the next year and the next two years. So they have $9.2 trillion in juicy treasuries coming up for sale, but $6.5 trillion is in 2023. And then $2.7 trillion is in 2024, and it's obviously laddered up. The problem is when this comes due, they're going to be paying a much higher rate, which means that they'll have more and more debt. They'll have to pay a much, uh, much more significant amount of interest when these come due. So this is uh, putting them between a rock and a hard place right now. At the same time, this is happening. Obviously, Bitcoin's fallen down a little bit now, but we are getting news from Hong Kong that they're allocating 50 million to expedite Bitcoin and crypto hub adoption. So well. The U.S. is kind of pushing for crypto to be pushed out. Uh, certain areas like Hong Kong are actually trying to innovate, trying to bring more projects to it. Dubai does that a lot too, which I think will help crypto in general. Any kind of money throwing thrown at crypto does help the overall industry in my mind. Speaking of money throwing uh, itself at crypto uh, or money coming from crypto, in the next day we have the largest token airdrop. So be on the lookout for this volatility tomorrow. This could be interesting. The Arbitrum tokens are dropping tomorrow. Some people will sell. Some people will just hold for a little bit. They'll be getting their tokens late. So this could pump money into the ecosystem for a while. Keep in mind, some people have been buying, getting ready for this as well. So we'll, we'll have to see how it all shakes out. But I would be ready for some volatility. There's also some scams going on right now and i've been noticing this on my own twitter i keep on getting tagged like this where there's an arbitrum airdrop and they're saying to go look at this website don't click these only go through the official arbitrum uh page like this look at this this has twenty four thousand followers this is not the official arbitrum foundation this is not the official arbitrum page so be careful don't get caught off guard if someone tags you don't click any of the links um, and just get ready because the next few days will be pretty crazy, I think, you know, in crypto and in the general market. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Overall, I think Jerome Powell pretty much said what he said in the past, gave some indication as to what they think about the banking situation, basically what we already expected, which is that because this happened, certain banks will be a little bit tighter with their lending, which will help the Fed not have to raise as much. But it doesn't sound like a rate cut is in the future. So maybe some of the excitement in the market that thought a pivot was coming isn't quite here yet. Let me know your thoughts though underneath the video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next.